Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be more of a review slash my impression of the Analog Pocket after one year of having it. So if you don't know, Analog is a company based out of Seattle, Washington, and their objective is to give classic gaming consoles a new modernized breath of life. They've made modernized products imitating the Sega Genesis, SNES, controllers, adapters, and so much more. Their last product is the Analog Pocket, which has a Game Boy form factor and is the first handheld that Analog has made. Now before pre-ordering the Pocket, I wasn't really aware of the hype around Analog's products, but it is real. Not only did the pre-orders take years to ship out, but even if you want to order one right now, you won't get it until closest to the end of the year. I think this is primarily due to the limited number of Pockets that Analog wants to make, but when this thing first launched, scalpers were having a field day. The Pocket is sold MSRP for $220, but scalpers were taking it and inflating the resale value to as high as $900. Real scummy stuff, but it is what it is. I'll go over some of the aesthetics and specs of the Pocket before going over my opinions from the last year of using it. The Pocket comes in either a black or white matte finish, has four buttons, two concave, two convex, similar to the SNES, a soft D-pad, similar to the Game Boy, shoulder buttons, similar to the Game Boy Advance SP, and a cartridge slot that takes Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. Analog has made more adapters for the Pocket that lets you play Game Gear and more, but... I don't use that and I'll tell you why in a second. The screen on the pocket is a 3.5 LCD. It has a resolution of 1600 by 1440 and 615 PPI, which is pixels per inch. I believe this is exactly 10 times more than Game Boy Color, but you guys let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. The pocket has an LCD, but this screen is so good that sometimes it looks like an OLED to me. Definitely one of the selling points for this thing. On the bottom, the Pocket has a USB-C port which can be used for charging, making music, and the analog dock if you purchase one. Aside from this, it has a 3.5mm headphone jack, a link cable port that works with other Game Boy handhelds, and a micro SD card on the side. Okay, now let's get into what I experienced over the past year with this thing. As you guys know, I love handheld gaming. If I can take something on the go and play it here and there, I see it as a huge perk. I grew up with the Game Boy generation, and when I saw this product generate some hype, I was like, I gotta get it. The product came in, the packaging was high quality, and I knew that this device was going to be everything I hoped for. And it was. I have a pretty decent collection of Game Boy and GBA games, and I was excited to play them on actual hardware. Yeah, I've played ROMs on emulators before, but the Pocket does hardware emulation. Go ahead and ask me what that means, and I'll make something up, because to me it's whatever. The Pocket FPGA chip is cool, and it's tech, and it's cool, and whatever. It works. I played my old cartridges on it, enjoyed them, and got that nostalgic rush I was looking for, but after this, I was in a weird spot. On one side, I had a really good way to play games, but on the other side, some of the games that I want are very expensive. I was essentially stuck waiting for the inevitable, and that was for someone to jailbreak this thing. This actually ended up happening quickly, because the Pocket has something called GB Studio, which lets you transfer user-created games on the Pocket and play it, a development feature. Well, people made a website that would translate normal Game Boy ROMs into the studio files and that gave you the option to play ROMs essentially. New life, yay! One downside was that this was limited to Game Boy and Game Boy Color games only. But as expected, the pocket was open right up just like a fat kid sneaking into a pantry at 1am. Cores galore. Cores were added and a core is essentially a system. As weeks and months went on, there were new cores for all the consoles that we would hope for. GBA, Genesis, SNES, just just so many. It's gotten to the point now where you can just download software, drop it on your SD card, and use it to add cores automatically. You'll still have to add your ROMs, but that is fairly simple. To me, if this is as far as the pocket goes, I'm happy and content. I have a fairly small device that boasts great quality and allows stop and go playability. Have a little bit of time, play a little, and make a save state. Know that you'll be picking it up again and playing it soon? Use a sleep function. Want to play it in a dimly lit room or bright outdoors? Boy do I have the screen for you. Handheld emulation devices drop faster than Yamcha in a Dragon Ball Z fight. They are everywhere and litter the market. These devices are smaller, yes. They sometimes play more powerful systems, yes, but they are not the pocket. The build quality, attention to detail, straight up dedication put into this thing is S tier to me. Now this device isn't cheap, but it is worth it to whoever wants it. Analog sells a hard shell case, but I wasn't really feeling that, so I just bought a Nintendo DS sleeve from it on Etsy and slapped on a glass screen protector. I also added a Metroid skin that was made from this really cool shop on Etsy. He also sells a lot of cooler skins, I'll link him down below. But with these cosmetic and protective additions, I don't keep my pocket stored in a vault at home. 
I drop it in my day bag or my backpack and take it with me. It's a great device to pass the time, and the modernization of it also sparks conversation from others who see it and wonder what kind of Game Boy it is. It's today's Game Boy. It's, it's the future. So my past year with the Analog Pocket has been great. This is my preferred device to play 8 and 16-bit games on, regardless of if I had the same game on another console. I recently uploaded a video of me using RetroArch on an Android phone, and I do still use that for some games. But if I play the game a lot and the button inputs are important to me, I'll usually just transfer my Android save file and put it on the Pocket for a more enjoyable time. So that's going to do it for my one year recap of the Analog Pocket, guys. This is one of my favorite devices if you can't tell, and that includes devices like the Steam Deck and Xbox Series X. I'm really interested in what you guys think. If you don't have a Pocket, are you interested in getting one now? If not, why? If you have a Pocket, is it everything you hope for? My use cases may be different from someone who makes music or is a developer, so I'd love to hear your experiences. As always, drop your comments down below, like the video if you enjoyed it, sub if you want because I can't make you, and again, thank you. We pushed past 200 subs and that still blows my mind. Making videos is fun, and when you guys leave comments mentioning that you enjoyed my content, it's dope and inspiring. So, okay, thanks, bye.